English consonants. In the International Phonetic Alphabet, we're going to use these three distinctions in order to de define our different consonants. So we've got the distinction of voicedness, the distinction of place of, of articulation, and the distinction of manner of articulation. And we'll go through uh, each one in turn. Then we get to manner of articulation. And again, the idea is we're using those places of articulation, but now we're defining our speech sound in terms of what kind of constriction it is. Is it a full constriction, a partial constriction, and so on? We'll start with what we call the stops. And the reason we call them stops is obvious. It's because the sound is fully, the air is fully stopped. P, B, T, D, K, G, U, U. All of those we fully stop the sound. Um, it might be even easier to hear if I do a vowel before and after. Ah-ba, ah-ba, ah-ta, ah-da, ah-ka, ah-ga, ah-uh, ah-uh, ah-uh. I have a hard time with that one. Ah-uh, that's it, ah-uh. Okay. <laughs> then we get to the fricatives, which has a very narrow constriction. And what that does is it creates friction in the air. You get a lot of white noise associated with these. Um, you know, think about the wind going through a tunnel or something like that, where you get a lot of white noise um, as it comes out. So those fricatives are going to be f, v, f, v, s, z, ch, j, and h. This is called an esh. This is called an ej. I already told you theta and ev, and the rest of them. We either say the sound or we give the letter, the alphabetic letter. Um, I actually, usually when I talk about phones, I like to just give the sound instead of actually having to name the symbol. And then we've got affricates. Affricates involve a actually a um, combination of a stop and a fricative. We call it a single phone because the duration is about the same as it would be for a fricative. So we do ch and j, a cha, a j. So we've got the tongue in the post alveolar position. It drops down over here and creates then this friction. So the air is going through very very um, quickly and causing a lot of white noise. So a full stop here and then a partial, con partial constriction there. And the gesture is made very quickly. Cha, ja. Then we've got the nasals. The nasals involve a place right here where we allow the velum to drop down. So the velum controls whether air goes through our nasal cavity or not. So we've got air coming up. It can go through the mouth, but if we open up that velum, then we can have it go through the nasal cavity. And you can see this. So if I do a mmm, and you look in a mirror, you can see your lips are fully closed. No air can get out of the mouth. Mmm. But you can tell that it's coming out of the nose because if you pinch your, your nose as you're saying it, then it will stop. Mm, and mm, or mm, mm. okay, those are the nasals. I think the reason that they're called nasals is fairly obvious. Nasals generally involve a full blockage of the air coming through the mouth, so it's like a stop in that sense, but the velum is lowered and it goes through the nose. Also notice that in all of these cases, the vocal folds are vibrating. Then we've got liquids. The liquids, likewise, like nasals, are voiced. Um, so the vocal folds are vibrating. These are have a, a fairly open constriction. So we've got Oh, which I talked about before, it, it's, an, it's a lateral as well as being a um, alveolar because that air is going along the sides of it. But it's a pretty 
open a pretty big opening there's no real white noise going on with it like there would be with fricatives and likewise with the er sound and i did it right this time of having it be an upside down r as it should be for english and again it's typically going to be retroflex in english but again the air is able to free freely pass by the tongue um, it's not a very very tight constriction and then with the glides, we've got an even larger opening. So we've got wa, wa, which is nearly a vowel. So the glides are very close to being vowels without quite being vowels. Wa, and then wa, it, it's not quite a vowel like in that sense because there's no vibration in, in the vocal folds. And as I said, um, most probably, I would say probably most people in the United States um, don't make that wa sound in which or why, um, but it, it does exist in some dialects of American English. And then we've got ya, ya, which again is fairly close to a vowel. The wa is fairly close to the vowel u, and the ya is fairly close to the vowel i. Okay, that's going to do it for our consonants. In the next video, I'm going to talk about vowels.